Today I want to talk about a new way to make panels at home. You may have already seen my video on how to make linen panels at home using PVA or white glue, but one of the downsides to that is the amount of time that it takes for the glue to dry. The other downside is that as far as I know, it's nearly impossible to get the edges of the linen 100% adhered on the first pass. This means that after doing touch-ups, this method of prepping a linen panel takes at least 48 hours, and sometimes I just do not feel like waiting around for that, <laughs> or tying up my work table for that long with all of these books stacked on top of a panel as I wait for it to dry. I also got a question about how archival this method is. The answer is that it's a pretty good method for adhering linen on panel. The Linaco glue that I use is conservator approved for adhering linen onto ACM or aluminum composite panels, so I'm not especially concerned about that. That being said, I often hear talk of how the Beva or Beva 371 adhesive um, is a superior choice. I wasn't super worried about needing to level up my original method in terms of making panels that are super conservator friendly um, because they're already so archival. But there is one thing about the Beva adhesive that tempted me, which is that you don't have to wait for it to dry for nearly as long as you do with the Linaco glue. The reason is that it's heat activated, so you really only are worrying about the adhesion while your iron is heating up the film, um, and then of course for a little while as the film cools down and the adhesive kind of solidifies. As a side note, I can't really tell which one of these ways of pronouncing it actually sounds more natural, Beva or Beva. Either one of them sounds really weird, <laughs> so I might not be sticking to one um, throughout the video just because I keep saying one and then deciding it sounds really silly and then switching. And also, just for a bit of background, um, this actually is an acronym. So Beva, Beva, uh, it stands for Burger Ethylene Vinyl Acetate, just in case you were curious. But back to business. I also had a feeling that since the adhesive dries so quickly, any areas around the edges that didn't adhere super well on the very first pass could likely be corrected right away. So my hope with this entire project was to find a method of panel prep that could be done and ready for painting within just a couple of hours rather than a couple of days. Oh, how wrong I was. <laughs> So I went into this hoping that it would be a straightforward way to more quickly and effectively mount linen onto irregular or large panels, panels that I couldn't just go out and buy and that might be really expensive to have pre-made and shipped to me. This was not straightforward. So in today's video, I want to show you my first attempt at this, talk about what went wrong, and then talk about my second attempt and how you can do this too, and why you might want to use this film despite the way I'm making it sound right now at the start of this video. <laughs> And part of the reason I wanted to make this video is because there is a really popular YouTube video on applying Beba 371 film to make linen painting panels. I found this video really helpful and I think it's a great video. But as soon as I started doing this myself and using that process, I realized that that video made it seem a lot simpler than it was, at least for this large panel. So let's dive into the first go round. I know you've already watched me do these steps and I'm backtracking a little bit here, but just like my previous DIY panel videos, my first step is to lightly sand my ACM panel, just enough to dull the enamel sheen, not enough to wear through the enamel layer to expose the aluminum. Um, to do that, I use 220 grit sandpaper and you can definitely do it by hand or you can use um, the rotary sander like I have. Next, I remove any dust and degrease the panel using rubbing alcohol and Viva lint-free paper towels. The alcohol evaporates almost immediately, so I can go ahead and begin the process of adhering the linen. Again, if you'd like to see this done in depth, 
you can either jump backwards in this video or check out my original DIY panel videos, which I will link in the upper right hand corner right now, um, as well as linking in the description. Then to adhere the linen, I first need to measure and cut a sheet of the Beva film that's just larger than my sheet, my ACM sheet on all sides. Then I need to repeat that same process with my linen. You definitely want a little bit of overhang um, just to play it safe. You will always wind up trimming at the end anyway. I also want to point out here that the Beva film is actually three sheets of film. The adhesive film by itself, which is then sandwiched between two protective layers. One is a silicone coated release paper that's an off-white color, and the other is a clear mylar release film. So to start, we need to remove the white release paper and then immediately put the exposed adhesive film back down onto our ACM panel. Thus begins the process of adhering the film by itself to the ACM panel and where things begin to go wrong. You've been seeing this step for the past couple of minutes, but um, just to kind of catch you up, I get out my iron. I set it to polyester, which is 150 degrees, and that's the setting that's recommended for the film, and begin using the process that's described in the popular YouTube video. I take the iron slowly across the short side of the panel, then create a T by making a perpendicular line down the center of the panel, and then I turn the iron perpendicular once again and drag out from the vertical part of the T. I do that over and over until the entire film has been heated and pressed down to the panel. Here's the trouble. This looked nothing like the process in that video. My first meticulous slow pass barely did anything to begin to adhere the film, so I went back and tried again. But then I noticed that there were really obvious air bubbles where the film had cured around an air pocket. I found that this was unavoidable, too. The bubbles were under places that I had gone with my iron really slowly. So now I'm starting to panic, and I'm kind of frustrated. In the video, it's said that when the film begins to kind of bubble up, that's when you know that it's adhered. But all I saw were air bubbles where there was no glue adhered. Like, it was really obvious that this was not working. This resulted in a two hour long ironing session to try and get every air bubble out. In the process and out of frustration, I left my iron on just too long in one stubborn area and I melted part of my ACM panel. And at this point, I had honestly put in so much time, energy, and hope into this process that I I, could, I just could not. I was 100% defeated. I turned off my camera, and I left the studio for the day. And after probably two weeks, I felt chipper and hopeful enough again to even look at this panel for a second time. For those wondering what I'll do with the old panel, I'll likely trim off the damaged bit of ACM and just use it as a smaller panel. But for now, I'm starting on a clean two by three foot panel. And I repeated all of the prep process and repeat the T method of ironing the film onto the sheet. The only change here is that I no longer used the release paper as a barrier. I found that it slowed down the process too much, and I also just couldn't see what I was doing through that white paper. So instead, I decided to use that mylar film as my only barrier because that was much easier to see what I was doing. And aside from the risk of just straight up melting the ACM, which was a mistake I was not going to repeat twice, this seemed like a pretty safe choice. So here we're just seeing a close up of what it looked like after this step. Now, by this point, I was armed with new information from the folks over at the University of Delaware. Because the protective mylar film and the ACM are non-porous, I don't really have any hope of removing all air bubbles until that mylar sheet is removed. So at this time, I just used my best judgment to get out as many bubbles as I could 
and then moved on without going crazy. And of course, this step went way better than last time. I got everything on without destroying the panel, um, went ahead and removed that mylar sheet. And I will say that wound up being a little bit tricky. Um, when cooled off, it didn't want to release from the adhesive layer. So I did use my iron to help with that just a little bit, but I think if I had just been a little bit more dexterous, that wouldn't have been necessary. And with that done, it's time to place the pre-cut primed linen down on the exposed adhesive film and use that same ironing pattern to stick it on. And now is when I'm starting to get actually frustrated. Not apocalyptically, not like melting the panel, but just this was so much slower and more tedious than I thought. After my initial pass, plus weighing down the panel while it cools, which you're going to see in just a moment, there were bubbles everywhere. And what I quickly discovered is that the slow, methodical tea method of ironing on the linen just would not work after this point. And I will explain exactly why in just a moment. So what you're seeing here is me trying to repeat this process of that T pattern just over and over and over because there were still really large sections that weren't adhering at all despite me going really slowly with the iron. And I know it's kind of hard to appreciate the speed at which I'm going because this is a time lapse. Um, trust me, you do not want to see any part of this video in real time. It would actually bore you to death. But I was going about as slow as I could comfortably go without worrying that I would melt the ACM again. Okay, and now I'm pretty confident that I've gotten everything. Everything seems to be sticking well. I no longer have big pockets that just aren't adhered. So I'm going to go ahead and weight down the panel with my art books the way I've done with past DIY panel videos. And... I'm just going to let them sit there while the adhesive cools. This really shouldn't take too long, but, well, you'll see how it goes. So here, just continuing to get on <laughs> um, and really like Tetris those books together, trying to make sure that all parts of the panel are pretty well covered. And as you can see, hopefully, after my initial pass of weighing everything down, there were bubbles everywhere. And what I quickly discovered is that the T method, it, it just wouldn't work because any time I would reheat an area in order to try to work the bubbles out, more bubbles would come up because I was reactivating the adhesive. Instead, I eventually found a groove where, well, if this can be called a groove at all, it did not feel like a groove. Um, I just ironed the areas with bubbles until they were totally flat and it seemed like it was totally adhered and I weighted them back down with books and let those sections cool again completely. Then check those areas and repeat and repeat and repeat. So I started scripting this video on that first day of filming and what I had written down was that this part of the process took about half a day. I wish that were true. So I had to go to bed <laughs> and check back up on the panel in the morning and then repeat the next day and then the next and the next. But I was really dedicated at this point. So I recorded every start and stop so that I could tally the number of times that I had to repeat this process. All told, I literally just went back and counted the number of clips from my footage just now, and it looks like it was 17 times. So maybe it doesn't have to take a whole day if you're really good about checking for bubbles as soon as the cooling is complete, or maybe there's some technique I'm missing to get it stuck down without a bunch of repeat attempts, but here we are. I will be the first to admit, most of the time suck in this process came down to how long I waited before checking the panel to see if it had fully cooled and to see if I needed to do any touch-ups. 
But who really wants to check on a panel every five minutes? Watching back through all this, I have one idea that I'm curious to try with my next panel because I do have a ton of this adhesive film and I might as well continue to try to figure out how to fully take advantage of it. What I want to try was suggested, I believe, on the University of Delaware Art Conservation Forums, and that is to use two layers of adhesive, one that gets put on the panel and the other that gets put on the linen, and then you put those two together and iron them together for the final step. If you want to see me attempt this... (laughs) Oh, gosh. Um, Please comment down below (laughs) to tell me. Or if you really don't want to see it, you can also comment down below to tell me that too. (laughs) So at this stage, or maybe long before this stage, you might be wondering, why on earth would anyone use this? Or how stupid does she have to be that this went this badly? There has to be a better way. Um, And I do know of a better way, which is that you would use a heated vacuum table. Basically, you would heat the table to 150 degrees and then use vacuum pressure to really stick the film down onto your surface and then eventually repeat that whole process with the linen on top of it. As far as I know, this is a really great method. I've also heard that heat presses work really well. Um, I'm not actually sure which one is technically like the standard But I have neither of those things, and I'm assuming none of you have either of those things either. Well, actually, if you do and you live near me, please let me know, because that might be way more convenient than any of this. But um, in any event, I do want to make videos that are, you know, nice and accessible and practical. So if you do want to make panels at home after having tried this, You know, this process took me four days versus the two days that it took to use the PVA or white Linaco glue. I was really hoping this process would be like maybe a two hour endeavor and it would be this incredibly fast way to get a panel ready for painting if you just have no heads up whatsoever. You know, if you have an idea and you want to start painting right away, but you don't have a panel ready yet, that this could be like something that just takes up a couple hours of your afternoon and then you can dive right into the painting. And I still think this has that potential, but for large panels and for someone at home using an iron, this just isn't as simple as I thought it would be. I think there is a chance that there is some technique with the iron where maybe you find that sweet spot where it's not going to melt your ACM. (laughs) I'm still bitter in case you can't tell. Um, And you just go really slowly and everything adheres really well. Or maybe using two sheets of the film actually really does make a difference and it goes much more quickly and it really is just a couple of hours. There's also the possibility that I was severely overestimating the time that it takes to cool back down for the adhesive to totally, you know, cure one way or another, whether or not it's going to have an air bubble or whether it's going to just stick to the panel the way I want. So I'm not saying that this is the end all be all, but if this might be your first time trying something like this, I would not recommend it. Now, that being said, if I'm literally trying to think of reasons why this might be practical for you, well, it would definitely be practical if you have a vacuum table or a heat press. It would also probably work pretty easily if you are not adhering to something that's um, non-absorbent, like ACM. It's possible that it's a little bit easier with MDF or a wood panel. That being said, I do not paint on those. I haven't researched them thoroughly. So that's really just a guess. Or maybe you're just super concerned with having the most archival choice possible, in which case more power to you. I'm certainly going to continue to hunt for the 
easiest application method for this that doesn't require a whole bunch of special equipment so that I can share it with you and of course so I can use it for myself in my own studio. So whenever this changes, whenever I learn something new, you guys will be the first to know. And of course, if you know, if you've tried this before and it's turned out really well and you think you know what might have been difficult for me on my side, I know the size of the panel was definitely not working in my favor. Please tell me in the comments. So you'll see now that I'm going ahead and trimming off all of the excess linen. And to be totally honest, this is me throwing in the towel. I got all of the bubbles out from the middle, but I still had not gotten all the edges down. Um, at this point, I typically trim it in order to see the extent of the bubbles. And I kind of had a choice as far as like, okay, do we now go back in with the iron? And I decided... This video has gone on long enough. <laughs> Whenever I need to paint on a two by three foot panel, I will go ahead and finish this process. Um, and right here, I'm just doing some close ups to show that this was not without side effect. There were places where the primer on my linen scorched from just having the iron on it as much as I did. And that wasn't like leaving it in one place. Um, so there's definitely technique that can be further honed here. All right. And with that, we need this video to end. I need this video to end. I need this panel to be finished one way or another. So if you found this video helpful, if this was something you were considering, um, and this kind of helped you feel more at peace with your choice to use something like Linaco glue to make your own panels at home. I hope you will give this video a like. As always, if you have any info for me, if you've done this before, please give me a comment. Just let me know what your own experience has been. And if you wanna see more videos like this, I hope you will also hit that subscribe button. And if you've watched all the way to this point, one, thank you so much. And two, I want to tell you about something new that I'm doing that I'm going to be talking more about in future videos, which is that I am building a course via my Patreon page. So if you are interested in getting critiques of your work and getting customized art lessons around the techniques and mindset to become a better Alla Prima oil painter, I hope that you will check out my Patreon page. I am linking it in the description, and I have a whole post talking about what this course is going to be and how it can benefit you. So I hope that you will go and find out more and see if that would be a good fit over on my Patreon. I'll be sharing more in upcoming videos, as I said. So until next time, I hope that you stay safe. I hope your loved ones are staying safe and happy painting. Thank you for watching.